It is a beautiful day today to do some thrift shopping and it's St. Patty's Day, which is why I got the, the green on. So you know, I always wait until like creativity tells me what to film. And so like oftentimes it's like day of and I'm like, you know what? I actually like have a totally like change of plans. I feel like I'd rather do this. And something that, you know, I've just been really loving and you know, I've been slowly redoing my bedroom. I really like all of the textured pieces um, that I've been seeing like on Pinterest. So you guys know my spot right now is more like a like really colorful, like boho kind of vibe and I love that. But lately I've really been drawn to like the like neutrals and whites and beiges and just texture. Like I really, really like that. And I think that that's something that I'm definitely incorporating into my bedroom as I redo it. So today I woke up and I really just felt inspired and I wanted to go like thrift shopping and like DIY some of these really cool pieces I've been seeing that inspired me. I really wanted to do some of like those wood beads so we call them like the wood bead strands and I wanted to redo some vases. I wanted to go see if I could find some like wood bowls and I really just wanted to incorporate some of these pieces into my house. So let's do it, let's go thrifting. We're gonna go to Goodwill, we're gonna go to Out of the Closet and let's just go have fun and enjoy the day. So let's do it. <laughs> All right, just got in the car from Goodwill. Ooh, this was a snag. All the texture that I needed, and I actually love this color, but I'll probably repaint the red part more of a white. I love this because it's like the texture that I need. And then something that I've been liking about the photos that I've been finding is like, there's like a really cool contrast between like stony looking like vases and like textured vases and then like sleek black pieces. And there's something about that combination that I just really like. So um, whether I repaint this or just leave it like this, I like how sleek it is and I like how black it is. We're gonna go to the next spot and hopefully they'll have like some wood pieces. Like I'm really hoping to find like a wooden bowl and um, then we're gonna go to Hobby Lobby to get some dried floral pieces and to get the supplies to make the wooden beads. So let's continue on. actually like such a successful thrift shopping trip um so when i went to out of the closet the first one hang on i actually got some old books because you guys know the vibe you see like the stacks of like the vintage old books and i kind of want to do that in my kitchen i've been wanting to do that and so i went and got some old books but i made sure they're the kind that have a really pretty like hard cover underneath the cover this one then I also heard like a long time ago in I think it was something about like feng shui or whatever that's called that you have to make sure that like the titles of your books and stuff are actually like affirmative to you and like speak to you so like I got a few books that you know have titles that um, that are affirmative and that I just I like what they're saying then I went to a third thrift store and I ended up getting like this bowl which was I got some things that were kind of unnecessary. I got this bowl. I got this bowl with the intention of painting it. It's pretty crusty. And then, um, these little wood candle holders with the intention of painting them and distressing them. And I don't think I'll actually use these, but I found like this cool piece of wood. Ew, there's a hair stuck on it. That's so gross. There's like gum and a hair on it. That's freaking disgusting. So I don't know if I'll actually like use these, probably not in my kitchen, but I think it'll be cool to like stack them up a certain way to just kind of like bring some like warmth. So super successful little trip. So just went to Michael's and I got some like, oh shit. <laughs> some like dried flour and I got some clay to do the DIY little bead, boho bead thing. So yes. Killed it. 
Let's go unpack, <laughs> unload. All right, guys, so first things first, I'm gonna come out here, <laughs> do a little saging on all the stuff that we just got, clear all the energies from whatever households um, I'm bringing them from. Someone actually recently told me that maybe the reason I'm having nightmares is because I'm bringing in like weird energy from everything that I thrift. So now I'm like doing this new thing where I sage everything outside of the house and I also bring all my cleaning supplies outside. And I mean, you just never know where this stuff has been. So you just wanna make sure everything is good and nice and cleaned off. You might recognize this vase behind me. I used it in a previous project, but the paint didn't really stick well. But I'm gonna use that, um, the same vase, to kind of create this look. Just like a white distressed vase, and I already have the dead flowers from, or I don't know if dead flowers is the right term, dried flowers from Michaels, and I'm gonna put them in here like this. So I'm just gonna hit this piece of ceramic with a Mod Podge so that the paint sticks to it a little better. I'm gonna let that dry outside and then I'm gonna jump to the other pieces and paint them while this is drying. Also just soaking all of these in some soapy water. Just to make sure all the germs are up. So I'm just using this leftover like chiffon cream colored ultra matte paint that I have from a previous project. And if you don't know this hack, you can actually add baking soda to any paint and it's gonna make it like an extra like matted texture, sandy kind of look. So I went ahead and did that, added the baking soda, and then I'm gonna give a first coat of paint to all of my projects that I'll be adding paint to. So the candlesticks, my vases, um, my bowl too, but I'm gonna be using a black. Um, and then letting it dry outside. All right, so I found some, some fresh mud, well, some dirt, and I added water to it. And um, I'm gonna see if I can rub this into the side. It looks like cookies and cream. <laughs> I saw someone online, I don't remember who it was, but they like grabbed mud and like rubbed it into their project and it just made it look that much more earthy. So I attempted to do that, but I think my dirt was like too dry. So it, I mean, it gave it a little extra texture, but not like that muddy look that I was going for. I began giving my pieces a second coat of paint, except for this vase, I'm one coat behind because I had to prep it and I continued on. This vase is already looking so awesome though. Like I cannot believe I painted it that ugly orange color before and this white is just gonna bring it to life for sure. It's, it's gonna be awesome. All right guys, so the first coat is done on the vase. It's already looking awesome. I've got two coats on the candlestick holders and then the other vase is outside drying. I'm just gonna let it dry and do um, another coat on this. And then I'll do a little bit of distressing on these pieces. And um, yeah, fun and easy little project. I also decided, screw it, I'm just gonna paint this piece too. Um, I wanted to keep it black though, and I did the same little hack. I just added some baking soda to some black acrylic paint that I had down in my cupboard. So I went ahead and gave it just kind of a light first coat of the black textured paint. All right, hit this guy with a second coat. Actually added some more um, baking soda to this round to give it a little more texture. This guy's still drying. That guy's doing okay at drying too. And two coats on the candlesticks. And we're looking great. I'm gonna let these dry overnight while I go to work. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to do the DIY clay beads and kind of finish this up. So I'm excited, so I will see you guys then. Good morning, guys. What's going on? It's a beautiful morning here in sunny SoCal. I'm really sleepy though. I had to take my mom to the airport really early today, so 
I mean, it's 10 a.m., but this is like I'm operating at an earlier time frame than I'm used to. Having said that, it's a great day to just kind of hang out and do some DIYing and finish this thrift flip. So my plan, I'm going to do the DIY part right now. And what I wanted to DIY this week were those little like, they're kind of like wooden boho beads. I don't know if there's a like exact name for it, but you've probably seen them like in all of these like inspo pictures, like they have like these wood beads, right? I'm gonna try to DIY that. I have a bunch of polymer clay and I have a bunch of jute down there. And um, yeah, I have like an idea as usual. Hopefully it works. It's kind of, you guys know me, that's how I always roll. And then I'm gonna finish up the thrift flipped items. Um, they just need a little distressing and a sealer and then we'll be done. So let's enjoy this beautiful morning and jump right into it. Let's do it. So I went to the store and bought an eight ounce package of polymer clay and I actually am really proud I thought about this but I decided to cut up the clay in equal size squares first before I rolled them out into balls because that's obviously going to be the easiest way to make sure that all the balls are equal size if you cut the squares out first evenly. So that's what I'm doing here is just kind of like cutting it up evenly and then once I get the squares cut out then I'm going to go and roll them into little balls. And then I actually had like an aluminum straw in my drawer and I thought that that would be like a great way to kind of like cut out the center of it. But even though it did do an awesome job cutting out the center, I quickly learned that the clay does not come out of the straw very easily. So I had to change my plan and just grab some plastic straws out of my cupboard and use those. They worked just as great. And then I had to actually cut the straw where I used the clay and like keep using it if that makes sense so I kind of said to like cut it and like keep using it as a stencil and I just repeated that until I had all of the beads rolled out and cut out and this is live footage of me chugging a cup of coffee because this week has been insane <laughs> Once I have all of my balls ready to go, then I'm going to take them and load them up in the oven. And I'm going to put it on 250 and cook it for about 12 minutes, but watch it very closely and make sure you set a timer. Oh my gosh, guys, my ADD just went like full steam for a minute. I had like 10 things going on. And I didn't set a timer, so my beads kind of burnt on the bottom. But it's all right, we're going to paint them. Now I have no choice but to paint them. While my little beads are cooling, I'm actually gonna just finish up my thrifted pieces. And um, I have a little piece of sandpaper. And yes, this is actually a nail drill. Um, you don't have to have a nail drill, but I just like it dawned on me. I'm like, hey, I could use this to like file some of the like details and distress like the small parts, you know? So I'm just gonna go in and distress it. And then I'm gonna seal my pieces and I'll be done with the thrifted pieces. Part of me wishes that I didn't distress it, but I mean, they still looked great, but I didn't really like the blue coming through. And you can even see in the background of some of these clips that I have my phone pulled up and I'm like looking at an original photo because I wanted to, I wanted the brown to come through and not the blue, but I mean, they still turned out great, but distress it if you want or not. And my last step on all of these thrifted pieces is to just apply the sealer. Um, this sealer is also leftover from that furniture flip that I did and it's just a basic uh, ultra matte uh, final coat and just think about it like the final top coat of nail polish like it just really protects it and especially from like water and stuff for this face so I've actually grown to love sealing everything that I do so I'm just gonna add the sealer to all of my pieces and then I'm just gonna go finish up my DIY project all right guys, so while these pieces are outside like baking with the sealer on, with Carmelo's uh, very close supervision, I am going to paint the beads. Um, you can tell where they're burnt, which sucks, but we're just gonna paint it, put it through some jute, and we'll be done. 
So I put a glove on and just made sure everything was um, good and thoroughly painted. And then I put them outside in the sun for the day to just let them dry. Once everything was good and dry, I brought them inside and I cut a piece of jute. And really this project is as easy as you would think. I started to um, put the beads onto the jute. Um, I also grabbed a pair of tweezers because it helped. Um, put all the beads on the string and then I made sure the knots at the end were like really really fat so that they're good and stuck on there well. Then what I did is cut a bunch of smaller pieces of jute and I kind of just took the ends of the jute that the beads are on and wrapped it around the smaller pieces of jute like a million times and did a little wrap knot on it. So I really just love the way that these all turned out and even these like clay beads for a minute I doubted myself because I was like oh crap like these were supposed to be wooden beads but you know what I went for it and I made them out of clay and I know I've said the word texture like a million times in this video but they're just such a great like such a great asset to any like you know piece of decor you're doing and it's so simple too so I just really like the way that they turned out and any of these other pieces too like if you wanted to go to west elm or urban outfitters to get pieces like this it would have cost you like both of your legs and the fact that you can literally go to goodwill or a thrift store and buy some of these things secondhand for like six bucks you know i hope that this inspires you that with a little creativity and time that you can you know afford to decorate your dream space you know, so I hope that this really does inspire you. If you guys liked this video, if you would just give me a thumbs up, please press that subscribe button and help out a young and struggling YouTuber. And if you would just comment below and say hello, it truly makes me happy. I do a little happy dance every time I get a comment. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I will be seeing you next week, but like I always say, love hard, be a light, and always have a little faith in your future. I will see you guys then. Bye.